This is the Walter WSR 160, made in the 1960s. It has oh so many things! Sliders for 10 input digits and a register at the top that mirrors the input, has another register for 16 output digits, and an 8 digit counter register. And on the right side it's got tons of cranks, levers, handles, bars, triggers, prongs, shafts, rods, arms, widgets, Hardy bees, flappers, flippers, we got them all! I got this machine as part of a mechanical mother load that I found about a year ago near where I live. This lady bought a house from a guy who never moved his stuff out, and that stuff included a huge collection of calculating machines, just piled up. I've never seen anything like it. I bought about 10 of them, and this is the first one I'm ready to show to the world. Most of this guy's machines were labeled with little stickers. Apparently he got this one in Amsterdam on June 12th, 1979 for 19 bones. Thanks, mystery collector. It was sort of hidden in that big pile of stuff, but it's a remarkable machine. This particular model was the last of its kind. The WSR-160 was the final and most advanced calculating machine made by the Walter Company. Yeah, that Walter Company. This machine is a very late era evolution of a basic design that had been popular throughout the early 20th century and even before. It's the same basic setup as the successful Oudner machine and its descendants including the Brunswiga. I did a video about that one. I'm talking about the famous pinwheel calculator. In my opinion, one of the greatest designs in the history of computing. The answer digits are on little wheels with gears attached to them. And there's a big gear with nine teeth on it that spins all the way around when you turn the crank. Turn this thing around once and those nine gear teeth will move the answer wheel by nine positions. Pretty good, right? You could turn it twice around and it'll add nine twice. That eight is like 18, right? This is an excellent setup if you want to add nine over and over. But what about adding another number? Like if I want to add four instead, well then I would need a different big gear with only four teeth on it. And here enters the precision engineering and just plain good idea of the pinwheel mechanism. The teeth on the big wheel are movable. Each one is actually a spring-loaded retractable pin controlled by the dials on the outside of the machine. When I slide this little guy, every time you hear a little click, one of those spring-loaded pins is snapping into position, either adding or removing one more tooth from the gear. So when I dial it to 9 and turn the crank, it adds all 9 pins. Dial it to 5 and it only adds 5. You stack a bunch of these next to each other and add carrying mechanisms from one to the next and you've got a fully functioning pinwheel calculator. The basic concept goes back to mathematical legend Gottfried Leibniz in 1685. Here's a picture that he drew of a gear with dents mobili. That's movable teeth. The Walter is pretty easy to open up and you can dial up them numbers and the pins pop out. So anyway, you dial in a number, then you spin the crank over and over to add repeatedly. This is how you multiply. Like to do 472 times 8, I dial in 472, and then I crank it 8 times. The register up here shows the number that you dialed, and the register over here counts how many times you turn the crank. So I can see it all laid out here. 472 times 8 is 3776. And there's one more ingredient that really makes a pinwheel machine work well. This button with the arrow is the digit shifter. Like what if I wanted to do 472 times 800? Well, I could turn the crank 800 times, but that doesn't sound like a very good idea to me. Everybody knows multiplying by 800 is basically the same as multiplying by 8, but like moved over by two digits, right? Well, you hit this guy and the entire answer register moves over by two digits. So now, when I crank it 8 times, that's like multiplying by 800. And as a bonus, the counting register moved over too, so the counter says 800. It all worked out. 472 times 800 is whatever that is. By cranking and shifting and cranking and shifting, you can make any complicated product that you want. Like for this one here. You ready for this? This is pretty impressive to me. I dial in one of the numbers and then I crank and shift to get the other number. Watch the counter dial there and just crank and shift to spell out the number I want. There you go, that thing times that thing is that thing. This is the basic design, an array of pinwheels plus the digit shifter. That was invented long before Walter, but there were plenty of small improvements over the years and the WSR-160 has basically all of them. 
Here's a real basic one. This is typical on pinwheel machines. You can spin the crank backwards too, and it'll subtract. Check this out. What if I subtract past zero? Here, let's try zero minus one. You ready for this? I do love a good ding. That's the signal that you've taken things a bit too far. The ding is actually a key feature for doing division on this kind of machine. Like, let's do 1,000 divided by 419. You start with 1,000 in the answer dials. You can actually dial it in manually on this one. Nice touch, Walter. And now how many times does 419 go into 1,000? Well, I can just subtract. Once, twice, three times. Oh, all right, the ding means I went too far, so I go back. Okay, so I guess it goes in two times. And what I see in the answer now is the remainder after you do that division. Well, if you remember your long division from school, maybe you can smell what the rock is cooking. We can shift down to the next digit and divide the remainder by the same number, and this will give the next digit of the quotient. You just keep on subtracting till it dings. And then you shift again, subtract until it dings, you get the idea. And there you go, there's the answer to my long division. This is pretty impressive. And there's still tons of buttons and sliders left. All right, what do we got here? These slidey things, they're not connected to the mechanism. They're just to help you keep track of the decimal points or whatever. Here's the plus minus. This is additions or subtractions mode, which affects the details of how the counter works. This model will usually choose the one that you want automatically. Nice touch. Most of the controls on this machine are clustered on the right side. The idea is that you can operate everything with your right hand. I love the design concept, although in practice, the machine isn't quite heavy enough to stay put. So I usually have to brace it with my left hand anyway. These guys up here, they're supposed to have plastic caps on them. They clear the input sliders back to zero, and they usually both slide together. If you specifically pull on the one on the right, it'll stay stuck down here. More on that later. If you don't like that, then this little guy back here will pop it back up. All right. The arrows here move the carriage one digit at a time. This one down here sends it all the way back to the start. This big red lever clears the answer register, and there's a switch down here. Usually the clear will also shift the register back to the home position, but you can switch that off so the clear doesn't move the register. The red thing actually clears both the answers and the counter. If you want to clear just one or the other, you slide this little guy before you clear it. You slide it to the right and it clears the one on the right. You slide it to the left and it clears the one on the left. They thought of everything. They even thought, hey, what if I hit that slider by accident? I got you, bro. This little guy over here snaps it back. And what if I always want to clear only one or the other? Well, it's quite simple. You slide this one to one side, and then you turn this one in the same direction to lock it in place. Oh, all right. These are mostly simple little tricks. Cute and useful, but nothing real earth-shattering. Here's a great feature, though, that not all machines at the time had. A back transfer mechanism. This will take the number in the answer register and transfer it back into the input sliders. This would be useful if you've been doing a bunch of additions to get some answer, and then you wanted to multiply that answer by something else. Of course, you could just dial that number on the input by hand, but who's got the time for that? You pull down the arm on the right, and it just kind of sits there in this weird state. Now remember, usually the big input wheels drive the little answer wheels when you turn the crank. But in this weird state, it can go the other way too. When I clear the answer, the little wheels are going to spin back to zero, and this time the little wheels drive the big wheels. Ha! Anything else here? We got some fixed red pointers. I actually love these guys. The register on the bottom moves back and forth, but you need to know exactly which digit is lining up with the input wheels. This red arrow always points at where the rightmost input digit is. It's elegant. But here's a mystery. The blue dot. I looked up some pictures of this machine, and it's not just mine. This is a real feature. The Walter Corporation bought blue paint just to make one blue dot right in the middle. Why? I don't know. Leave a comment. This machine was built by the Walter Corporation, a German company best known for guns. And you know in America we love guns. Guns are lots of fun because you can shoot people. I mean things. Things. You can shoot things. Walter's best known gun is probably the PPK pistol, which is so cool. It was James Bond's gun. And that is so cool. Before 007, of course, the PPK was the weapon of choice for the German secret police in the 1930s and 40s. Secret police are cool, right? 
They even made two gold-plated PPKs, which Karl Walter himself personally presented to Adolf Hitler and Hermann Göring. Guns, am I right? So how's the Walter Company, which is known for its awesome guns, end up making these nerdy calculators? Well, Walter's gun factories got shut down as part of the disarmament of Germany after World War I. So they started making calculators. Calculators instead of guns. Maybe you can tell I'm a bit of a swords to plowshares kind of guy myself. I'll take Jesus over John Wayne any day. So I love what the Walter calculators represent. It didn't last long, but this is a calculator that might have been a gun. It's a calculator instead of a gun. Sure, man, guns are pretty cool, but you know what's better? Fewer guns.